Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. Sorry, I missed our Monday Lectio Divina, so I am missed it on Tuesday. It's Wednesday, so I'm going to throw these probably Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week instead of our normal Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Apologies for that, and I think I'm going to add in um, the Angel of God prayer and Laudate Dominum that we did this summer. And why am I adding those? Because it's almost Christmas and the angels came to the shepherds and gave glory and praise to God. So it seems very apropos. And I did write those in the back of my journal. I don't know if you did um, when that we were doing all those extra prayers this summer for St. Michael's Lent, but I thought it would be a lovely time to add them in. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Sume glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et da mihi fidem erectum, et spem certain et caritatem perfectum, domini ut facium tuum sanctum, et verax mandatum. Amen. <coughs> Angela Dei, qui custus es mehi, me tibi commissium pietate superna, hodie, Illumina custodi rege et guberna. Amen. Alleluia. Laudate Dominum omnis gentes. Laudate eam omnis populi. Quonium confirmata est super nos misericordia eius et veritas domini manat in eterno. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. If you're wondering all the faces, um, sometimes people put comments on my pronunciation in you know, down below. And so there are little extra notes written in that I forgot were there. And that, that made me stumble a little bit. My apologies. So we're looking at um, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Why? Because it's one of the where one of the verses comes from that inspired the earliest rule of the Franciscans. And it was so inspirational for St. Francis. We go back and read the whole chapter. It's a great study, um, especially for our Franciscans. And you can't go wrong with the book of Matthew. I mean, can't, can't really go wrong here, right? And when his disciples were come over the water, they had forgotten to take bread, who said to them, take heed and beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But they thought within themselves, saying, Because we have taken no bread. And Jesus, knowing it, said, Why do you think within yourselves, O ye of little faith, for that you have no bread? Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and continue that, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. That's where I have it marked to stop. Uh, but I do think this is... I think this is very timely. It's always timely, no matter when you read a passage in the Bible. It's always you're always going to be like, "Whoa, this is so timely!" That always happens to me. Um, I am going to read this several more times for us. Just, it's very interesting for when we haven't taken provisions, which so oftentimes we do think to me in our secular life, like, "Oh no, I forgot my keys, <laughs> and things aren't going to go well." Ah, I forgot to pack a snack for the car, you know, for this long trip. Maybe you're going on a Christmas vacation um, or going to see relatives and you forgot to bring snacks in the car. And you're like, ah, if only we had gotten those. And Jesus is saying, no, take heed and beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's not saying don't go to use a public restroom at a gas station or, you know, He's not telling them not to buy gas station sushi here, which is probably a good tip. But that's not what he's saying. Why does he say, take heed and beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Were they thinking within themselves because we've taken no bread? So what do they think? Like the Pharisees and the Sadducees are going to poison them if they ask them for bread? Like what were they thinking here? It'd be really nice to be inside the head of the disciples here because they might be you know, they, they had, oh, it doesn't discuss the bread thing. Are they like, oh, he's talking about leaven because he knows we don't have any bread. But why, why then would he bring up the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Or are they known as being particularly good bread bakers? Can I, I really wish I could fix that light glare for you. Um, so it's kind of funny. Are they, they known to be particularly good bakers or something? I, I don't think so. So that's a really odd Thing to say. Oh, I wonder if that isn't that image. <gasps> it's things that, that are reflecting. This is the Christmas tree image on my glasses. I'm wondering if other things up sitting up on the printer are doing that. Yeah, that's definitely better. 
but now we have the hazy glare. Ah, the lighting in here. It's whack today, isn't it? It's beautiful sunlight outside, though, and that's, that's the problem. I apologize. Take heed and beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they thought within themselves, saying, because we have taken no bread. Jesus is like, really, guys? He knows what they're thinking. Uh, it does also make you think, because we all have those wacky thoughts in our heads, especially this week. You know, there's another decree from the Vatican supposedly distinguishing between liturgical and spontaneous blessings. And we're all having a lot of really weird thoughts in our heads. And we would love Jesus to clarify that. But it's just interesting. He's like, Ugh. Do you think this has to do with your material well-being again? Oh, ye of little faith. So every time we have those wacky thoughts in our head, you just see Jesus going, oh, ye of little faith. Why are you worrying about that again? And it, it's especially interesting that it's bread they're talking about here, right? Because bread of life discourses, you know, <laughs> the bread of life is coming. Like he is the bread of life. And they are all so obsessed with this bread interesting. He's like, really? But they do have bread among them. They have Jesus right there. They should know that they're going to be okay, both their physical needs, but also obviously he's not talking about that. There's going to be spiritual needs. He knows that there's going to be a time when he has gone away. What are they going to do in that time? Are they still going to rely on his teachings even when they can't see him, even when they can't feel his presence? Are they going to rely on his teachings or are they going to fall back to their old habits from the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Is that old logic going to come back in? And we always hear about this too. Like if somebody's an addict and they successfully go to rehab, it's dangerous to go back to their old ways because their old ways will involve those drugs. Now I'm not, not saying a, a lot of things there, but we know that. If you've had certain habits at a certain place, you go back to that place. Maybe you get together with an old group of friends and there's behaviors that you may not have done in years, but when you're with those friends, those behaviors, that pattern of speech, it sort of comes back to you. And we know that. So what's it going to be like when you don't feel Jesus present in your life? Sometimes it's really easy at Christmas. Sometimes it's really hard not to feel him with you, right? What are you going to do? Are you going to go back to your old ways? For a lot of us, that's where those Christmas traditions come in. And I think that that does speak, when we're talking about Christmas, almost secularized Christmas, but there is a religious sense too. Um, like your parents are gone, your grandparents are gone, maybe your, your siblings, some of your cousins. Christmas doesn't feel the same. Your kids are all grown up. Maybe you're an empty nester. It doesn't feel feel like Christmas anymore to you. And you don't have that feeling of presence, right? That Christmas presence, <laughs> not the gifts, but the presence of family that maybe you used to feel in that presence of tradition. But sometimes going back and making those cookies that you used to make with your mom or decorating the tree in a way that your dad did it, Maybe that is something that can connect you to them. So when Jesus isn't with us, are we going to fall back to the traditions of that we used before we really embraced him in our life, whatever time that was in our life? Or are we going to stick to the things we did with him when he was here? Are we going to remember him? Go to church, go to mass, spend time with the body of Christ give to the poor. It's these things that he did when he was here. Give praise to God. If you cannot feel Jesus, spend some time with God the Father. Pray the Our Father. Meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. Those are great ways to help connect you back to Jesus because Christmas is Christ Mass. It is the story of Jesus loving us, the Father loving us so much that Jesus came to be among us. It's that story of great love. So spend some time with your Bible. It's going to be easy to fall into those old secular habits. What did you do in Christmas? Uh, you know, when you were in college or goofy things that you might have done if you went to public school. But what are those things that are going to connect you to your Christian family, even when you don't feel Jesus? Whether it's this holiday, uh, the next holiday, the next one after that, whatever it is, 
in your daily life, how are you going to keep connecting with Jesus? And one of the ways is right here, friends, spending time with Jesus, the word of God, spending time with the book, spend some time with him in adoration. You can have a crucifix in your home, a nativity scene that you can meditate on. These are all really great ways to connect with the body of Christ. What are some great ways that you have to refocus yourself on Jesus during the holiday season and also in your everyday life? Be sure to share them below. Friends, um, yeah, let's just end with our, our regular blessing. I was going to see if we were going to add something in here as well, but let's end with our regular blessing. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedicat tibi dominus et custodia te ostendit dominus facium suum tibi et miseriator tui. Convertit dominus voltum sum a te et dominus bonus det tibi pacem. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. God bless you, friends.